Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the comedy and romance movie titled, For Love and Money. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Somewhere in New York, a man called Mr. Doug Ireland tells the chauffeur he doesn't like to stand still. Next, they arrive at a jewelry store, asking to buy 20 carat earrings. Being shown a pair, he thinks they're too young and asks for their parents. He then stops by FAO Schwartz to pick up an enormous stuffed toy giraffe. Eventually, he arrives at a fancy hotel, where people around him all bid him good morning, and he tells a person he'll need the giraffe in an hour. Next, he knocks on a door, and tells a woman the earrings are for her, which she absolutely adores. A man called Salvatore appears kissing her, and Doug remarks Salvatore has great taste. Salvatore says he's a beautiful kid, giving him a big tip, and asks him to walk his dogs. In the elevator, Doug gives the dogs some expensive remains from some meal, and then tells an employee to please walk the dogs, giving him $10. Next, he's working hard as the hotel's concierge. The hotel manager called Mr. Himmelman asks Doug to tell the man carrying the bags to hurry up, and Doug walks up to Milton, telling him he has to go two trips if he has two, and Milton replies he's not done two trips in his entire life, and never will. Taking a break, Doug and the bartender hear how a wife disappointed tells her husband she came to fall in love again, not find him in a dark room eating a tuna sandwich alone. The bartender remarks the husband seemed like a good guy, and asks Doug to maybe help save their marriage. Walking out, Doug sees the couple quarreling, and walks up saying he got those tickets to the opera he asked for, and that he's made the reservations for a late dinner at the Rainbow Room, and that the hotel limo will pick them up. The wife gets really happy that her husband came with this surprise and goes to fix her hair. The man called Harry remarks he's really good at his job, thanking him. Doug tells him not to confuse himself with small tips, but wait until they're best friends, and then give a tip so big it's like passing a kidney stone, if he's worth it. Suddenly, Doug gets a call from Mrs. Vigusian from the store in the lobby, telling him he should marry and settle down with the woman over by the fern. Doug replies he sure will. He sees a guy called Gary looking at him, who's his friend. Gary tells Doug not many guys get their dreams to come true, but today he himself will. Doug remarks he could get fired for this, but Gary reminds him he owes him big, and Doug somewhat reluctantly hands him keys to a hotel room. Next, Doug goes to Barney's to pick up a package, but sees an unsatisfied woman testing perfumes. He knows the younger woman working there called Andy, and plays around with her a bit, but then sincerely helps the other woman find a good perfume, telling her to be careful with this one since men can start jumping at her. Andy tells him he's a real piece of work, and Doug remarks you can sell anything if you tell people what they want to hear. Doug asks her out on a date, but Andy says she's got a boyfriend. He asks if this guy treats her okay, but she won't answer. Next, Gary comes back, telling Doug he made the call to the big man Mr. Hanover, and managed to make him agree to a meeting with him, and Doug gets happy. That evening, Doug walks home, and in his apartment, he takes a look at a model of a hotel before he goes to sleep. Next day, as Doug is working, the big man called Christian Hanover arrives at the hotel, and Doug meets him together with Gary. Gary leaves, and Doug shows Christian Hanover to his hotel room. Christian tells Doug he's there now and asks what he wants. Doug starts pitching him on a deal to buy a hotel on Roosevelt Island with the best views of Manhattan, and asks him to put down $3 million to secure financing of the property. Doug adds he's used all his savings of $40,000 from the past five years on an option to buy it, but if he doesn't get the $3 million in one month, he loses his $40,000 and the option to buy it. Mr. Hanover says he's interested, and then suddenly someone knocks on the door. Christian remarks it's his girlfriend, and asks Doug not to tell his wife. Doug opens and sees Andy, and both are surprised. Doug leaves, and on his way down, Harry asks him for advice on clothing for his dinner, and Doug recommends a store nearby. Harry sees him being down, and asks if he's okay, but Doug remarks he's on top of the world. As Christian is leaving later, Doug goes up to get Andy to leave since the room has to be cleaned. As Doug walks in, Andy tries to explain to him this isn't what it looks like. Doug remarks he doesn't believe her, remarking it looks like she and Christian are falling in love, giving each other gifts and trips and eating lunch with Chardonnay, all while Christian's wife is unaware. Andy says he's mean, and Doug remarks he is, but asks if he's wrong, and she remarks he is, that they don't drink Chardonnay. The next day, a man from the IRS called Ed walks up to Doug, telling him he's heard some people don't report their full incomes, remarking he knows about the $50 handshakes, and asks how he can afford a $40,000 option on a real estate deal. Doug says he got his way, and Ed tells him he'll be back and expects to see all his documentation. That night, three shady dudes with an Italian accent tells Doug they want to see a dickhead called Salvatore. 
As Doug doesn't cooperate, they take a look at his room number himself. Doug tries to call and warn Salvatore some shady people are coming, but Salvatore is in the shower, and Doug has to run as quickly as he can to get there. Suddenly, the three men arrive on the floor. Doug hears Salvatore yell he's gonna kill them, but then he sees how they're playing happy birthday for his 45th birthday, and Doug congratulates him too. As Doug is leaving the hotel later, he passes by a restaurant where he sees Andy and Christian having dinner together. Next day, Christian tells Doug some of his men are looking over the deal, and asks Doug a favor, to go and listen to Andy sing at this bar since something has come up and he can't. Later, Doug watches as Andy is singing. When she finishes, she doesn't seem to want to talk to him. Doug walks up and tells her Christian sent him to say he's sorry he couldn't make it. She asks where Christian is, and Doug says he went to the country. Andy remarks his wife is in the country, and Doug makes up a story, saying his wife actually went to France because they broke up, and that Christian went to the country to clean out their house. As she's about to leave, Doug remarks she was great tonight. The next day, Doug is talking to Ed from the IRS when suddenly Christian calls. Doug answers and Christian tells him Andy called him, who thinks he's alone at his country house and is on her way there. Doug remarks he'll go stop her. Next, a pilot asks how he knows Chuck, and Doug says he doesn't, but that he knows a guy who knows a guy who knows Chuck. Not long after, Doug arrives at Christian's country house. Inside, Christian's wife says a strange man jumped out of a helicopter. Christian says it's a friend of his. Later, Doug suddenly sees Andy appearing, and runs as quickly as he can to intercept her. He tells Andy he's saving her from an embarrassing mistake, saying it's a divorce party, which all rich people have, saying Christian's wife is at the other side of the house. Andy asks if that is Christian's wife, and Doug answers yes. Andy remarks she shouldn't have to find out she's having an affair with her husband, which the woman overhears, and Andy says she's sorry. The woman calls on her husband Randall. Doug sees Ed from the IRS and walks back inside. Randall's wife points at Andy, and Randall says he doesn't even know that woman. Randall says he wants to talk to Andy, who his wife thinks he's having an affair with, and Doug says it was a mistake, that she's actually having an affair with a Mr. Bailey. Randall says Josh Bailey is his friend. Doug asks him to guard the door while he fetches a car. Doug asks Christian for his car keys. Meanwhile, Randall asks a woman to go get Josh Bailey. The woman goes and tells Josh and other people about what has happened. Meanwhile inside the room, a man asks Andy if she doesn't hate Christian's bullshit parties, and Andy replies she just hates Christian's bullshit, and he introduces himself as Julian Russell. Josh asks Randall how his secretary got out there, and Randall says it's not his secretary. Suddenly Josh's wife asks who it is this time, and suddenly, Julian Russell asks them to get a bottle of champagne, and all the women think both Randall and Josh are dating Julian Russell. Doug appears, telling Andy they need to go. Next, Andy says she feels bad that Christian's wife found out about their affair, and Doug says she didn't, that he lied about who she was. Andy says he never lies, and Doug says he's doing favors for Christian. As they get back to the city, Doug asks to borrow her toilet. Doug sees Andy starting to pack to go away. Suddenly Christian calls, and Andy says she never wants to talk to that asshole again. Doug gives Christian some tips on what to say to Andy to make her less upset, and then tells Andy that Christian wants to say goodbye. Doug then hands over the phone to Andy, and Christian starts saying the things Doug told him too, and Andy starts changing her mind. The next day, Doug is working hard again, and suddenly sees Harry looking at a $15,000 watch. Doug asks what he's doing, and he says he thought he'd give his wife a present. Doug tells him nobody buys a $15,000 watch in a hotel lobby, saying he can save him a couple thousand. They enter a store nearby, and Doug says they want a Piaget Tanagra. The man says it costs $9,000, and Doug starts negotiating it down to $8,300. Harry asks if it was true he could save taxes if he sent the watch box by post, and Doug says he'll go ask again, and once back, gets a few hundred bucks for the sale. Later that day, Christian calls Doug he's got a lot to do and needs him to go and keep Andy company, which he was supposed to do, and then meet him at a restaurant at 9 p.m. Doug tells Milton he needs him to send this watch to this address, and these business plans to this other address, and then rushes away. Doug tracks Andy up, saying Christian asked him to keep her company, and that Christian would meet them at 9. The two go to eat lunch, and Andy reveals she's got a dream to sing the national anthem in a large stadium. Next, the two are in a stadium and Andy is singing it, and afterwards Andy remarks he can truly arrange for almost anything to happen, and Doug remarks that's what a concierge does. Later. Doug takes her to show why he's giving so many favors to Christian, which is to make his dream come true, to run his own hotel, and she remarks it's beautiful. They drive to the restaurant where Christian is arriving soon, 
and before they leave each other, the two remark that they had a wonderful time today. As Doug is walking past a restaurant on his way home, he sees Christian in a restaurant with another young woman, and Doug smiles. He goes back to the restaurant where Andy is, and remarks it occurred to him Christian might be delayed. The two start talking, and not long afterwards, they're talking and having a great time. Suddenly Harry appears, and Doug remarks he looks real good, and Harry says it's his and his wife's 20th anniversary. Doug asks what his wife thought, and Harry says she laughed. Doug remarks that's not good and asks Andy to go dance with Harry to give his wife a wake-up call. Harry tells Andy she's got a really great guy, that Doug has done a very big effort to help his situation, but she remarks Doug just does it for money. Harry says he never got that impression, remarking that Doug's gone way out of his way to save with his marriage, something you don't do for money. Doug tells the piano man something, and suddenly the man says this next song is for Harry and his wife on their 20th anniversary, and Harry and his wife get happy and surprised, walking up to dance to the song. Andy asks Doug if Harry is a big tipper, and Doug replies he doubts it, but remarks it feels good to make someone that happy. Suddenly Christian calls, saying he's sorry that he can't make it to the restaurant, that he got a lot of work. Hearing Doug is with her, Christian asks to speak to Doug. Doug is then asked to drive Andy back to the hotel, where he'll meet them. Back at the hotel, as Doug is about to leave their hotel room, Christian appears. Christian says they're business partners now, and tells him to come to Julian's show on Thursday for signing of commitment papers, after which Christian walks up to Andy, and Doug hears him tell her that he's finally left his wife. He walks to the elevator, looking at a fire alarm trigger. He steps on the elevator, but then backs out, triggers it, and starts smiling. Next up, it's Thursday, and Julian's show is in full swing. Doug arrives, and Christian says he loves this business, it's like a candy store. He then hands over commitment papers, but adds there's an extra form in there that transfers the $40,000 option to buy the estate over to his own corporation, saying otherwise they'll have to spend 12 months fighting the IRS instead of building the hotel. Doug is happy, and then asks what his wife said when he divorced her. Christian replies he never left her, explaining it's his third wife, and that you never leave your third wife. Doug remarks he thought he loved Andy, but then Christian says he and his wife have an arrangement, that his wife forgives his relationships with all the Andys, and he won't leave her. Andy appears, telling Doug she and Christian are going to Italy right after the show, and suddenly Christian comes back. Outside afterwards, Andy sees Christian talking to Ed. She remarks she recognizes that man, and Christian says he's just a guy that helps him occasionally. Doug looks at the envelope and rips it apart, running out, and sees Andy and Christian leaving. Doug can't get a hold of any taxi, so he runs into the hotel, up to Mr. Salvatore. Salvatore opens, saying this is not a good time. Doug remarks he's always been good to him with his dogs and jewelry and things, and now asks him to do a big favor for himself. Next up, a lot of garbage trucks are rolling out. Doug runs out, and since there's traffic jam, Doug buys a horse in exchange for some exclusive opera tickets, and then off he goes. Suddenly Andy remembers that that man works for the IRS, and asks Christian why he was talking to him. Christian explains when he needs someone nudged a little, like now with Doug, he needed Doug to sign over the option on that property to him, so Ed made it expedient. Doug asks a biker to trade his bike for the horse. Some police officers ask the garbage trucks why they're blocking the traffic, demanding they move at once. Andy asks if he tricked Doug, and Christian replies he won't let such a fine building end up in the hands of a bellhop like Doug. Andy gets upset and angry, saying it's Doug's dream. Christian tells her to grow up, and she says she will, remarking she's growing up right now, and leaves him. Suddenly Doug comes running, seeing Andy on the other side of the bridge. They start yelling to each other not to trust Christian, that he's trying to destroy both their lives. Some time later, Harry makes a call to Doug, asking where his watch box is, but says this deal he sent is spectacular, even though he usually doesn't do such small deals. Doug wonders how his plans ended up with him, but then gets it. Doug tells him he'll gladly talk later, helping Andy out of the car, and the two walk into the hotel as newly wed, and start kissing in the elevator. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.